welcome to World Series of Poker. Going to show you a tournament in here. But since this is the first video, let me show you a quick tour. Labor Day was that game that they're having right now. So your settings, pretty everything, everything's pretty much self-explanatory. Right down here, this blue bar, you can get three chips every four hours. So that's that. There's your special roulette games that are going on right now. Um, this number here, up in the top, shows the. Uh, the 59 uh, million is the amount of chips that I have right now. My goal through these video series is to get that up to 1 billion. And whenever you sit down and you play uh, at a table, whether it's one of these roulette games, one of these tournaments here, you can click on any of the players you're playing with and see their stats. Um, by stats, let me click on my picture here, and it will show you my stats up top here. It will show you the different tournament rings that I've won. Every time you win a tournament five times, it gives you a ring. So, through these video series, my goal is to get these next rings here, London and Las Vegas. Um, Alright, showing you my stats again. Here's my bankroll, or the amount of chips that I have, 59,033,586. And you'll notice as you play this game that the object of the app is to get you to purchase, actually pay, for more chips. Um, so you got to be really careful playing this game. That You try and play smart, you try and um, manage your bankroll as if it was a real bankroll, because... It will very quickly de deplete your chips through various uh, playing the tournaments or playing at tables. Um, it seems to uh, get rid of your chips quite quite quickly to and try and get in your frustration, your emotions can take over. And uh, there's been many times I've been tempted to just go purchase a whole bunch of chips to you know be able to keep playing. But um, I have gotten. Um, through playing, if we go down, we look at our stats here, uh, real quick. Um, you can see here I'm pretty conservative. Before the flop, I fold 53.1 percent of the time. Uh, that's pretty high when you look at most of the players on here. Uh, we'll look, we'll click on a, f a few, and you'll see that um, most of them are much lower than that. So the lower that pre-flop number. Just kind of gives you an idea how conservative uh, they are. If they have a really low number, like 15%, basically means that they're playing just about every hand that they're dealt. So no matter what cards they're being dealt, they're playing. Even if it's a, a two and a five off suit, you know, they they're still probably playing it. And the frustration, frustrating thing with this app for a lot of uh, a lot of poker players. Um, a lot of the people who play these this app is that those players who play those kind of um, opening hands will still catch like a straight or a two pair and end up beating you when you after the flop still had like the high pair or something um, and you can see my other because I uh, fold so much pre-flop most of the time I'm playing all the way through because I'm usually playing pretty good cards so I'll generally see it most of the way through so you can see after the flop only 9.3 percent and the turn it drops down to 3.6 and then after the river the lowest at 2.6 you can see my raise frequency at 20.6 that's on the higher end um because most of the like i said most of because i'm folding pre-flop most of the time when i do play a hand i'm generally raising because i'm playing with decent cards so I usually, that's my style of, uh, of play, is to use raises to kind of see what, what the other players who are still playing may have. And uh, so in a tournament that works out better, just playing at one of these tables, 
it's harder because like I said most people on this app play just about everything so you never know if someone's gonna get lucky or something or because they feel that there's not real money they'll just keep calling your raises um, even when they don't have anything so it gets a little harder to read someone or some of these players with your raises so um, but you still got to give it a try uh, just looking at the rest of the stats real quick you can see total hands played 52,778 I've been playing for quite a while uh, on this app um, probably uh, over two years maybe going on close to three years that I've been playing on this app and that puts me at a level 185 uh, there um, average winning hand 365,000 and this is a, a big tell right here. The biggest pot I've ever won in a single hand was 626 million. And you can see right now I only have 59 million. Most of the people that you click on, you'll see their biggest pot that they won is usually a, a number much bigger than the chips that they actually have at the moment. So that tells you that at one point I had at least 600 million. But now it's all, I'm down to only 59. So basically, I've been I've been I lost all those chips. And most of the people that you click on their stats and you look at their stats, you'll see that that's the case with a lot of them. That they have a really big number there, but then their current bankroll, their current chip stack is much lower. Because, uh, like I said, this game seems designed to to try and take your chips back. But we're gonna see if we can overcome that and actually go up and then just looking at the bottom stats here it shows you the best hand pretty much everybody if they've been playing a while has gotten a royal flush at some point the different stakes table you know you can start at you know one dollar two dollar blinds uh, go all the way up to you know five million ten million i think it, it, some of the tables even go even higher i didn't actually really play at a five million ten million dollar table i think i just clicked on it once to kind of take a look real quick and then quickly got off because it was uh, um, a little too too much stakes for even when I had uh, a large stack count. Mostly, you can see I play at the 50, 50k, 100k blind table. Uh, that's more my comfort level. And then the last two stats are I've won 233 tournaments and I've been in the money 410 times. All right, let's get to it. Enough stats here. Um, you can see all the tournaments they have. They start with Atlantic City. If you win this tournament, you win 200,000. And down here, you can see that the buy-in is 50,000. And then they go up from there to Paris. Once you get to Paris, all the tournaments, you have to win two tables. Um, and then to, to actually win the, the prize. So, like, um... You can see they go all the way up to Las Vegas, where the buy-in is 80 million. You play at a table of nine players. If you win that table, you win your buy-in back, your 80 million, and you go to the the final table. And if you win the final table, you win another two. Um, It'd be 2.64 minus the 80 million that you already won at the first table. And then, so today we're going to go to the Sydney tournament where you can see it says here final round. That's because I've already won the first table on the uh, Sydney tournament. And the Sydney tournament is a tournament of, um, you have to play five players. And then win that table, you win your buy-in back, which is $500,000. And you go to the second table, and if you win the second table of five players, the final table, uh, you win an additional $6 million, since you already won your $500,000 at the first table. All right, let's get in and see what it looks like. Sydney. You can see here it's got the two things. It shows that I already won the first table with the 500. Round two, five players. Six million is the first prize. There is a second and third prize, even though there's only five players. 
Um, I forget what the amount is, but if six million is for first place, I think second is one million and third is five hundred. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, so you see we're waiting. Okay, so we got all four other players that we're playing against. Our first hand, we started right out. We're small blind. Um, and we're five jack. Uh, I'm going to stay conservative and get out and see if I can get a look at how some of these other players are playing. So right off the bat, he's betting 320. Pot's up to 2400 now. He's still betting. So you try and, uh, you know, watch a situation like this. Two other players still in it. He stopped betting and see what he had that he was betting about. Oh, now she's got something that she's going to go a fairly big bet, three grand, and gets the other two to fold, and she takes the pot. All right, nine queen is a okay hand. They folded. She's still in it. I'm going to give a little raise, see what if I can knock one more player out. I was trying raise also because I like to get it down to as few players as possible. So we still got three other players. He throws in a big bet. He did some betting last time, but it's too early in the tournament for me to be able to tell if he's bluffing or not. So I'm going to fold in case he has an ace. Um, I don't want to take the chance this early in the, in the tournament. Since we're making this video, let's see if we can at least last uh, last into the tournament a little bit. Now, if we take a look at his stats. He's uh, a raise frequency 13.4, which is about average. Most people are in about there, but you know he's uh, as we have seen already. He tends to raise a little bit, and you can see he's got a 23 million uh, chip stack. And he folds about 29.2. Again, about average for most people on here. Um, but obviously, there's a lot more hands than I would. Okay, the blinds have already now jumped out. Um, I'm still going to fold. Sit back and see if I can get a read on some more of these players. How they're playing. You can see four king. If I had stayed in the sand, I still uh, would not really have anything right now. And I try, because I raise so frequently, frequently, I try not to uh, not to bluff too, too much. I try to use it sparingly. Uh, ideally, I like, uh, I like to show the other players me being aggressive with my raising and then actually having a decent hand so that um, when I do need it or want to use it, I can bluff and have them have them think that I actually have a good hand because that's what I've shown them so far. Okay, just the two of us here. Um, I'm just going to check because she's going to call no matter what I raise. Now she's raising me. I'm going to back out because I don't have anything yet. And let's take a look at her stats. She only supposedly 9.5% of the time and 32.6 pre-flop, so about the same ballpark as that other guy, but raises a little bit less, which tells us that if she's raising, she most likely has something. If she's only raising, you know, 9% of the time. Not always. In a tournament, sometimes you can see someone with, uh, you know, conservative stats. All of a sudden, they're acting really aggressive and, and stuff and kind of going, you know, because they're in a tournament, sometimes they may change how they're uh, how they usually play if they're at just one of the tables this uh, shark person here they don't seem to have been in many hands yet so my guess is they're pretty conservative no same thing in about that 29 percent there uh, generally they're a little more aggressive 15.9 percent so you can, see there, you can see the blinds go up quite, quite often we get a pocket pair. Let's 
the thing, especially in these beginning tournaments, a lot of people. Uh, I'm going to back off of this one too. Especially at the beginning of a tournament when the uh, blinds are still relatively low. I like to sit back as much as I can. Maybe get uh, you know another player that you know the other players to knock one another off at first. And uh, all right, King Eight. That's pretty decent. Let me um, see if I can knock someone off here. Two down to two more players. All right, two more called. Really nothing on the board there, so if they called with decent hands, they shouldn't have anything right now either. This person, uh, I don't know, if they played with crap cards like 3, 7, 4, they may have got lucky and just caught one right there, but or they may be bluffing an awful lot. Um, I don't want to call one of those bets until uh, you know I actually have something to call with it. With that flop there, I, I still didn't have anything, even though I had a king in my hand. Um, uh, it's not not worth it. So even though I I did a bet before flop, she evidently called it and still had one of those cards, low cards. She could have had like an ace four or ace, you know, something like that, and uh, got lucky on the flop and caught a pair. And so that's why she threw out a bet. All right, king ace. Let's see if we can win a hand here finally. Okay, we got we got that one. So since I bet before, I'm just gonna throw out a bet. Before. Uh, still, wish that girl was on this one. Okay, we do got someone that bet with us that called us here. Who knows what they got or why they would have called that? But I'm glad they did, so we can hopefully make something. And they still caught it. Oh, maybe they caught a flush. We're going to have to be careful with that. But we'll go pot. Let's hope they didn't catch that flush. And they didn't. So that was a, that was a decent one we got. Okay, we've got some good hands here. Because I was just aggressive on that last one, I'm just going to call at this point. We already got two people out, so it's just the three of us. Possible straight hand going here. I'm just going to check and play it out, see if we... Uh, uh, it's worth to keep going, because we got a possible flush or a possible straight. Let's see what she does here. She's been betting on me a lot. I folded, so let's see what she does. I'm going to have to call that. I probably shouldn't. Seems like she did, have, in fact, have something there with going all in, or it was a desperate move to get me to fall in. Since I really didn't catch that straight or that flop, I had to fold. All right, let's hope that nobody has a king. Someone could have two. Uh, he might have a king now. He may have the two diamonds too and just caught his flush. And I think he probably did. Not looking good. Our chip stack is down to 9,800. There's still four players on the table. So we're getting a little bit desperate measures there. It looks like uh, that last one he caught that flush. Or he was acting like he did. So since we didn't catch what we needed, we had to fold. The temptation with playing poker is in situations like that, or like when this uh, this girl over here, KC, raised me a few other times. The temptation is to call, but it just puts you out of the tournament if you call when you don't have anything. Um, they may be bluffing, but if you don't have anything either, 
then uh, that's a good way to get out early. And she had some decent ones there. Not good. The blinds are raisin, and I don't have much left here. So I'm going to have, I'm big blind, so check. Let's hope I get lucky or something. Someone's not happy. as many people go in on this one as possible so I can get hopefully win and get as uh, build my pot back up uh, my stack back up again let's hope they don't have no neither one of them has a jack or a pocket pair higher than mine Is he bluffing or does he have his jack? Putting out that bet like that. Two pair, and he did. He had his jack. So I am out of the game. And that will do it for now. Thanks for joining me, and hopefully on the next one we will win our tournament. Thank you.